More than three decades on from the Chernobyl nuclear disaster, memories of what happened may have dimmed somewhat, but the physical reminder, the ever-present fallout, does remain. The explosion of reactor number four after a botched safety test sent radiation pouring into the atmosphere. Officially, there were just 50 confirmed deaths, but most estimates put the real number in the long term in the thousands. 350,000 people were evacuated from an initial 20-mile exclusion zone, including the entire neighbouring city of Pripyat. This zone was later expanded to cover around 1,600 square miles, with radioactive fallout detected as far away as Greece, Norway and the UK. And while that may have long cleared in Ukraine, British scientists are using drone technology to find and map previously hidden hotspots. Once a year, a crowd appears in the normally deserted town of Pripyat. This time, they're lighting 33 candles, each one marking a year since it was evacuated, leaving only decaying buildings and memories behind. In this very building, the Palace of Culture, is where I had my wedding ceremony. It was special not just because it was my only marriage, but also because the witness was Alexei Ananenka, one of those legendary men who went under the reactor to release the water. When the Chernobyl nuclear plant melted down, the actions of the wedding witness Ananenko helped prevent a far worse explosion. He survived, but 28 of his fellow liquidators died of radiation sickness. Despite their efforts, the reactor, now sealed in a new safety structure, left a vast radioactive legacy that persists over thousands of square kilometres. This is the edge of the Red Forest, the area where the initial plume of fallout from the reactor fell. And even 33 years on, it's still a highly radioactive place, and the trees in particular are drawing radiation out of the ground. As you can see, this level's about 300 times normal background radiation you'd find in the UK. Some areas are so radioactive, the trees can't survive, let alone people. So that's where the robots come in. Never deployed in the Chernobyl zone before, they can get as close to the contamination as the treetops allow. This team of scientists from the UK's National Centre for Nuclear Robotics are using drones to make the first high-resolution radiation maps of contaminated areas. The picture they're building of the Red Forest reveals hot spots within it where highly radioactive material was buried and not recorded during the frantic cleanup. But they've also discovered hot spots where there weren't supposed to be any. Near this rusting vehicle depot, their drone found levels of radioactivity none of them expected. So we walk in to this facility, we're basically okay. saturating the detector. So we can't stay here very long. It's not safe to stay here very long. Um, but this is how localised some of these hotspots are. And what could be causing this? It's quite likely this is reactor fuel debris. So it's very highly radioactive material. Just a few metres away, the radiation level is 2,000 times lower. You have to be respectful. There are certain areas you don't want to stay for very long. It's Mother Nature doing a job here. So some of the radioactivity has died away, and so the overall levels have dropped significantly. But there are certain radioisotopes that are still present which have very long half-lives, and so they're going to be around for a long time. And having a better idea of where is now safe and where isn't is crucial. There are plans for a huge solar power plant here exploiting the old reactor's electrical grid connections. And in places like Pripyat, Guided tours and the money they bring have already increased tenfold in just three years. Mapping the radioactive mistakes of the past could help revitalize the zone. 33 years have passed and now we are in a situation when we can see what the future holds for this area. So much has happened in the last three years. We can now start saying that the exclusion zone is an area that is changing. This unique place frozen in time for a generation, is perhaps at last starting to look to tomorrow. Tom Clark, News at 10, Chernobyl.